Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Mr. Gambo Hamza joins us now. He's the Executive Secretary of Kaduna Investment Promotion Agency, Kadipa. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much. Well, Kadipa is the organizing uh, uh, lead. You're taking the lead in organizing this investment summit. I'd like to know, I mean, what kind of response did you get from uh, people or investors while you were promoting this, uh, for this particular second edition? Well, um, good morning all. Um, Kedipa, as you know, is the agency set up to do the investment promotion aspect of state uh, desire to uh, achieve development through private sector oriented approach. Uh, in doing that, uh, in our discussions last year, we told you we're open for business. And having um, achieved uh, some of those things we committed to, um, I can assure you that uh, this uh, summit today has attracted beyond uh, the members, not only that, uh, the names, uh, you know, uh, very, very huge names in the business cycle. Uh, we hope that um, as we unveil a number of programs for this uh, investment summit, uh, we'll be able to guarantee that Kaduna will become the investment destination of choice. You know, I, I did ask that because uh, the economic situation in the country definitely affects everyone. So did you see the investment increase or you had a lot of promissory notes? Not only increased, we're actually struggling to contend with. In every ocean there is an island. So is Kaduna the island? It's an island. <laughs> I can I, 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 Yeah. Uh, our numbers, uh, I don't know whether the Commissioner of Budget and Planning did mention to you, uh, our own Bureau of Statistics, we go on the field to verify numbers. Our growth, a GDP growth rate is 11.3%. Take it. 11.3%. Mm. 3%. That is, That's huge. That is in spite of the fact that, you know, well, in the last couple of months, you know, Kaduna has been on under some fire or under some scrutiny over security reports. Yeah, this is, this is always a challenge when people say Kaduna is on fire over security report. Mm -hmm. Kaduna is made up of 23 local governments and we have two or three local governments that are 190 kilometers away from Kaduna. That's the capital. That's capital. And the capital to take you to the northern frontier of the capital mm -hmm. is another 200 kilometers. Not everybody so, knows that. That's, that's a challenge that we admit that we have to address. For people to realize, we still put it up on the map, which location we have these challenges. And even in those challenges, I can tell you, like the Vacampro Potato Project, the community themselves decided to set up security for the investors. They set up security? For the investors. They, don't, they didn't have to wait for the government. The people are there right now walking. It's a $120 million project. This gives a sense that um, uh, your people in Kaduna State want this level of development and rapidly also. But of concern is the, the capacity for the government to be able to support that, uh, that feeling, that thought, that willingness to allow uh, developments to encroach into Kaduna as quickly as possible. What are you doing to encourage communities, for instance, to be able to partake in ensuring that businesses grow in your state? I can tell you also that um, in every that we have, if we decide on location, we go on location and have a stakeholder engagement. There's no one single investment that we have done without engaging every stakeholder. Uh, since this crisis started, it's only one investor that tried to leave. And even that investor on persuasion is an Australian mining company. If you recall sometimes last year, there was a huge fine of nickel in Dangoma, Jamaa local government, which is one of the core areas of the crisis. And having pulled out, the people were brought together to understand, hey, this is going to be our loss. And today, I'm happy to announce that Australian mining company is back on site. So in every, the gold mining, we're carrying the communities along. We're not even saying the so-called illegal miners, no, pack your baggages and start living. We're going to start professional mining. No, we have started what is called artisanal mining. 
and putting them in clusters. Do it on a regulatory framework basis. Who regulates them? The, 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 the Federal Ministry of Mining under the laws, you know. So uh, they have to operate within the ambit of the law. But they are clusters. Mark you, the terrestrial mining is different from oil mining because you have to dig, you have to do other things, and some of it you don't need all the sophisticated uh, machinery, albeit uh, that, yes, you could not achieve optimal listening. We don't want to push them. They're doing something. If you go to the communities, those uh, artisanal miners, I would not want to call them illegal. You know, we have to engage them and make them realize that what you are doing, you can benefit far more than you are doing so. Because what you used to have is a case of middle men who come and take a kilogram of your find for peanuts and go and sell it half a million or whatever. I don't know how, how much you, you consider uh, querying activities in Kaduna State because I know that Kaduna State sits on the basement complex itself, so you have that big resource. Sounds to be <laughs> All right. Yes, indeed. Uh, but you have that big basement complex that you can take advantage of. And what we notice in the north, not only Kaduna, in other neighboring uh, states, uh, bordering Kaduna state, is the manual approach to using the hammer and breaking <laughs> on the on the, yes and chisel and breaking on the rocks. I see a great potential for for I, instance. I, in I, that. I, 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 I want to put it like this to you. <clears throat> yes, that has been the case. But as I'm talking to you, we have nine mining quarrying proposals. Where you t if you're traveling back by train, please just have, I don't know what form of transportation you used to come, but if you're going back to Abuja by train, you see a number of mining quarrying sites. And not only that, you would also find that uh, the level of uh, participation of the construction companies has increased in Kaduna. So they all have to find current uh, sites which have been allocated by the Mining Cadastral Office, MCO. Yes, it is very true. We, say we, were, we, were, we are located at the center of it all, along with Plateau State. And we have CB, which is doing one of the best granites in Africa today. We have Amsalco Mining. In fact, they are going to do some awards using their granite products, the plaques, to some of the uh, resource personnel at this investment summit. Just to showcase that, we have a mining group exhibiting here. You know, quarrying is one of the key aspects. So yes, I agree with you. We're transforming mindsets. We're looking at, you know, going just beyond quarrying for road building or, or, or building purposes. So yeah, for you as, a, as the organizer, you say the response was very good to this uh, 2.0 investment summit. You're quite impressed. How much are you hoping you'll be able to bring in in terms of investment? You have a target. Uh, I did say something like this last year, that it's, it's, it will be kind of uh, highly presumptuous in an investment promotion situation to start saying these are the numbers. But however, we have a state development program that is of a 1.6 trillion naira size over five years. And of that, 800 billion, 50% of it is to be private sector driven. So to that extent, uh, Keduna Investment Promotion Agency, Kedifa, is saddled with that aspect of ensuring that 50% of the state development plan is private sector Finance. Yeah, but for each year, you must have a target. We understand that from last year, you were able to at least, uh, you know, get a, get investment worth, I think, thirty five million dollars. Three hundred and eighty five uh, million. Three hundred and eighty five. Yeah. Is that not I just told you of one project that is one twenty million dollars. Okay, so if that is the case, you know, what is the target for this year? You must have set targets for each um, year. Our target is between nine hundred to one point five billion dollars. And you think that's feasible? It's highly feasible. Because if we have what we call the pipelines, we, 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 we have what we call investment pipelines. You bring in your proposal, or we believe you can do an investment, we follow it up and see, and we put it in the pipeline tracker. At various stages, we reach a level that we say, okay, this is looking realistic. We need to do more to do 
the attraction and the support required for them to really come and establish. So, yes, it's between 800 to 1.5 billion dollars that we have. Incentives do you give investors or would be investors? Um, the incentives are multivariant. Because of what we did last year, the federal government decided to also set up the Ease of Doing Business Committee, headed by the Vice President. At the end of Card Invest 2016, His Excellency the Governor set up an Ease of Doing Business Committee. And that Ease of Doing Business Committee has done a lot to generate and attract attraction to Kaduna. And in doing so, a number of states, and I will say it with all sense of pride, uh, not less than seven states came to Kaduna to see how do you do it? How can you help us? And um, we willingly, we're all doing it for one purpose, the growth and development of Nigeria. All right, uh, we'll have to anchor at that point. We know you have a tight schedule. Gambo Hamza is the Executive Secretary of Kaduna Investment Promotion Agency. Thank you for coming on today. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go away. <laughs>